Amen. Grab your neighbor and tell them that my wings is already showing. Say that like you mean it. My wings is already showing. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on wherever you are joining us this day. Um, in my little closet, early hours of this morning, I had to ask God that why am I being allowed to come up here? There's at least a thousand plus youth pastors in our CCG, and by the grace of God and the support and the approval of our Father in the Lord and the leadership of this great mission, I've been here at least three, four times in the last one year. And then Holy Spirit said that it's because part of your assignment has not been fulfilled yet. And I asked, what is that assignment? They said, you are a miracle baby. One of two. And as we've understood, like Elijah said to Elisha, if you see me when I am living, then that which you want is going to become yours. And God said, you have to tell my people to show the faithfulness of what I am and by the testimonies that we've heard here today, if they can see a living miracle standing in front of them, then whatever it is that they want as their miracle, they can claim it and accept it. Okay, I think somebody is getting that, so I will hold on for you for two seconds. They said the reason, the other part which I asked is, why is my time always cut and reduced? My brothers and sisters that were here yesterday got 30 minutes. I only have 15. And the Holy Spirit said, I do not need 15 minutes to give them the miracle that they want. They just need to see you. So jump up on your feet right now, wherever you are, whatever it is that you want from God. Before our Father and the Lord comes up, go ahead and claim that miracle. Go ahead and claim that miracle. Go ahead and claim that miracle. You are already here. You can see a living miracle. You were part of the testimonies that was shared. So go ahead. Go ahead. I would give you 15 seconds out of it. Go ahead. Go ahead and claim that miracle. Go ahead and claim Ask that miracle. Ask me now what can to say. Amen. My Father, my God, I am grateful for this opportunity to be here this evening. Thank you for the miracles that you have done in this mission. Thank you for testimonies that we cannot even explain. How do you give birth at 52, 53? When all hope it seems to have been lost. For keeping our parents between accidents and issues. For allowing the miracle baby to come out of them. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Thank you for the prayers that you've answered. Thank you for the ones you're answering right now. And thank you for the ones you refuse to answer just to save us. Be that exalted, almighty God. Lord, as we lie here this evening, every word that will be shared, every word that would come forth, everyone that would also confess with their own mouth, please put a seal on it in the mighty name of Jesus. 
wherever you find a proper amen do their own for them first in jesus name thank you almighty father in jesus precious mighty name we have prayed amen and amen and amen give that somebody a high five and tell them my wings is still showing let's be seated let's be seated we're on the clock first and foremost i would like to appreciate our father in the lord and our mother in the lord for this opportunity once again the leadership of rccg for allowing us to do this and to be here especially the pastor seed family the young adults and and youth ministry uh, the provincial pastors uh, and psf and everything else in between daddy and mommy and the leadership we are saying thank you we are grateful we are grateful we are grateful thank you once again we pray that god will keep you to a hundred to be able to keep leading us and guiding us in jesus name isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 it has been read at least four or five times in this place so you would have to walk with me and just remember it the bible makes it clear that those who wait upon the lord they will renew the strength they will mount up wings as he go they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint I would like to take you back. Why do I need wings to fly? Because there are mountains. Because there are mountains. The first Holy Ghost service this year, the theme of it was Mountain One, Mountain Top One. The second one is Mountain Top Two. Now, if you continue on that, a mountain is something that is against you and you achieving your destiny and you making it to where you are supposed to be. A mountain can be an obstruction. A mountain can also be very useful in advertising you. Until there was a mountain called Goliath, David was not known by Israel. Did somebody hear that? So tell somebody that problem you're facing right now is going to lead to your promotion. Ah, oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Tell somebody that problem you're facing right now will lead to your promotion. So what can you do with a mountain? Every time you face a mountain, what can you do to a mountain? The first one is you can turn away from the mountain and run away from your promotion. Jonah in Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. Run away from his promotion. See, this evening I need to warn you very quickly. In Romans chapter 10 verse 10, it says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth one confesses, and that confession leads you to your salvation. So you will be saying some things this evening by your own mouth. I would not say it for you. You would say it by your own mouth. So by faith, say, I am not going back. And I am not turning back until I receive my promotion. The second thing you can do to a mountain is you can go the long way around the mountain in order to avoid the mountain you can go a long way around the mountain the mountain will still remain but you would avoid that mountain in numbers 32 verse 13 the children of israel took 40 years to go around the mountain called jericho say it again by faith all walls that are standing against me my destiny my family they are coming down now in the mighty name of jesus come on say it again all walls that are standing against me my destiny my family are coming down now in the mighty name of jesus the third thing you can do to a mountain is that you can go towards it and start climbing it. You can go towards it and start climbing it. Exodus 17, verse 8 to 13. Exodus 17, verse 8 to 13. The Amalekites were a mountain. And once you start climbing a mountain, it lets you see that which is truly going on. Moses sat on top of that mountain. He climbed it and that allowed them to win their battle. I pray for somebody you would receive strength to climb your mountain in the mighty name of Jesus. The fourth thing you can do is that you can tunnel through the mountain like the children of Israel did to a mountain called the Red Sea. You can tunnel through the mountain like the children of Israel did 
to a mountain called the Red Sea. Exodus chapter 14, verse 21 to 28. Exodus chapter 14, verse 21 to 28. I can hear the translators translating in French and in Yoruba telling my spirit, slow down. We are trying to catch up. So I will slow it a little bit. The mountain will be there, but you would get to the other side of it if you tunnel through it. Now, the fifth thing you can do to a mountain is you can dynamite it. You can blow it up. You can blast it out of your way like the walls of Jericho and Joshua in chapter 6 verse 1 to 20 Joshua chapter 6 verse 1 to 20 through the help of God Almighty he dynamite that wall say it by faith say the walls the walls my fathers and my mothers did not conquer I will conquer them in the mighty name of Jesus the sixth thing you can do to a mountain, you can dominate it. You can get to the top of it. You can build on top of it. You can hone the mountain. Like our Father and the Lord has done in our humble village in Ifeora, where we have a place called Mount Camel. The view from the mountain top is always different. So after climbing the mountain, like Elijah did in 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. Elijah did not only dominate the mountain, he also controlled what was falling up and down from that mountain. Say this by faith this evening. Say the mountains that my fathers and mothers could not conquer, I will dominate it. I will dominate it. The seventh thing you can do to a mountain is you can fly over it. The seventh thing you can do to a mountain is you can fly over it. See, the thing is that the mountains might still be there as the challenges that they are. But this is the best option of all because you can always fly over it. You would not have to turn away from it. You won't have to move around it. You won't have to climb it. You won't have to tunnel through it. You would not even have to blast it. You would only dominate it, mountain after mountain after mountain. You would have an advantage of a view. In fact, when you're on the mountain, your network connection is always better. You would be able to speak to God because you are closer to him, both physically and spiritually. There will be less noise and less interference. By faith this evening, say, I am here to fly above all mountains. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because of time. You can see the hand of God over this mission. Every single theme our Father and the Lord has given us from December even till now. Even beyond, before that time. You can just see how the progress is. What was the theme for Congress in December? I cannot hear you. Divine repositioning. And then we came into January, we had the mountain top. We were divinely repositioned so that we could climb up that mountain with ease, without any issue. Then in February, we got to mountain top two. That was elevation to the next place where we needed to be. Now, we are on eagle's wings because eagles naturally dwell on top of a mountain. You can see the progression of what is going on here. And when you're on the mountain top with the theme for this year that the eagle is there, eagle can only move like my brothers were sharing yesterday and my sister by the wind that comes to them. The theme for this year is called my year of wind of favor. My year of wind of favor. Now the wind is blowing. Very quickly, there's two basic things a wind can do to you. You can have two kinds of wind. You can have what you call the headwind or a tailwind. A headwind or a tailwind. In the aviation world, which is one of the places that I'm in, when you have a headwind, that means the wind is resisting you nonstop. There have been flights that have been known to be delayed by minutes or even hours because they were faced with a headwind. But when you have a tailwind, it would assist you to get to your destination even faster. The rest of your friends might have married ahead of you, but by the time you get married with the assistance of this wind of favor that is coming, you would have gone past them in every other thing that they are dealing with. Oh, I think somebody is receiving that. Somebody is receiving that. 
because there would be an assistance that is going to come your way through the tailwind. I wish somebody would jump up this evening and say, I receive the assistance of the wind of favor. And then remember that favor can only be activated by what? By fasting. Esther activated her own favor by fasting. Um, the story is endless. You can do your research. There's loads of examples that I will not be able to share with you today. And what did RCCG as a mission get involved with? 50 days of fasting. So for many of you that might have skipped one or two days, you are hoeing God a few days to fully complete the activation of your favor. For those who did 21 days, well done, well done, well done, well done. If you are, celebrate God and celebrate yourself. Our Father and the Lord has steadily guided us and lined us up all the way. But in closing today, I will tell you a story that our Father and the Lord used to share with us that has to do with our humble place that we come from in that great village now turning to town, Ifewara. People would say, why are you always going back to Daddy Jill's story? Well, if you have something, you should not have to wait Till you, lose it, till you lose it before you realize how valuable it is to you. You can celebrate the value now while you still have it so that the value will keep increasing. So that the value will keep increasing. Is there somebody celebrating God in the life of our parents? So there's a village store that the store owner has displayed on top of his store no credit today, come tomorrow. No credit today, come tomorrow. So that when people would come and they would see the sign, keeping in mind that the village is a, is a community. Everybody knows almost everybody else and everyone is connected to everybody one way or the other. So they like getting things on credit. So when he came up with this idea, no credit today, come tomorrow. When the people would come, the next day, they will see the same sign. Now, tomorrow has now become today. So they would have to come again the next day. Remember Romans chapter 10, verse 10, like I told you, that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you would get what you want. So this is what we are going to do this evening. I would say, I will guide you, then you would say it. But for testers, we will turn that same signboard into our own confession so that we can receive that which we want. And all our Father and the Lord will do this evening when he comes is to come and seal that which we have already said by our own mouth. Because sometimes not what you want is actually being called out as a prayer point. It is only you that you know what you want. So when sickness comes knocking on the door of your life or your family, like mommy said when she held her husband, you would say, no vacancy today, come tomorrow. Are you with me? When failure comes knocking, you would say exactly the same thing. No vacancy today, come tomorrow. Uh, I think you are getting it, you are getting it. All right, do you mind if I plead with you if you can jump up on your feet because you have to take these things by force. You have to take it by force. In the new arena, in the whole arena, and, and anywhere you are watching as well, either at work or driving or anywhere. So we will take it from the top. When sickness comes knocking, you would say? When failure comes knocking, you would say? No vacancy today, come tomorrow. When sorrow comes knocking, you would say? When death comes knocking today, you would say? When demon comes, you would say? Ah, now let's go deeper. 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 My time is up. I'm on borrowed time right now. But then we have to take it to another level. Our Father and Lord has taught us that we can always go deeper. There is more. There is more. There is more. With this God, do not ask for a bread. Ask for the bakery. Do not ask for an alert. Ask for the whole bank. Now, when sickness comes knocking, you will say, no vacancy today.
do not return tomorrow let your not be clear when failure comes knocking you will say no vacancy today do not return tomorrow okay when sorrow comes knocking you will say no vacancy today do not come tomorrow when demons come knocking you would say when death comes knocking you would say when poverty comes knocking you will say and the father of all of them when satan comes knocking you will say If you believe that, can I hear you shout a strong and powerful hallelujah?